hello, this is your conscience. No, it's not. It's just me, Dr. Bavsar. And today we are going to do a stem dissection with celery and we are going to do some staining and observing vascular bundles, that's xylem and phloem, under the microscope and also doing some magnification calculations. Let's get started. Uh, we'll need some sharp scalpels. We'll need uh, our celery. Um, that will be our stem tissue there. We'll need some toluene blue stain, okay? Um, a, a beaker of water just for washing the excess stain off at some point. Then, in order to prepare the slide, we will need microscope slides. We will then also need some cover slips. So these are the very small, very thin squares of glass, which I don't if, know if you can actually even see that, okay? Very thin pieces of glass that we place on top of the sample uh, to more easily view that sample. Okay, uh, and once we've made our slide, we also need to do some um, measurements using the eyepiece graticule. So the other thing that we will need is a microscope. I hope you can see that. Okay, we will need uh, microscopes with eyepiece graticules up in here. So that means when you look through it, you should see a scale um, uh, in your view. As well as that, that by itself you cannot use for measurements. You will need a stage micrometer as well. So something to calibrate. For the transverse section, we will be cutting across. Okay, so we'll be looking essentially down the vascular bundles, down the stem. You might be using a scalpel like this. W what you want to do is to try and make the thinnest section that you can. Okay, so I'm gonna try and do this so that you can see. I'm just gonna cut the end off because it's got a bit dry. Okay, but you wanna try and do the, the thinnest section that you can. And, and what I would suggest is that you have multiple goes at this. And it, you don't have to get the whole thing. You can get a little bit like so, and you can just keep making sections. So even if your scalpel is not the sharpest, you can still try and make a number or, of of different sections and then use use the one that is the thinnest and wh whichever one looks to you like it might be the best one okay now I do have at my disposal um, a scalpel with a, a sterile blade on it so I'm going to use that um, just to show off okay so I'm just going to cut the rubbish bit off there and then I'm just going to try and make again the thinnest the thinnest section that I can remember for light microscopy it is important for you to get the thinnest possible uh, layer or section so that a it's because the light passes through the sample doesn't it in in light microscopy the light passes through the sample and so the thinner the sample is the more um, information that you'll get. Okay, now I'm happy with that one, so that's the one we'll use. And then the next thing is, once you've selected your sample, you then soak it in water. So I get a beaker of water, and I'm just gonna, so awkward, I'm just gonna put that in there and leave it to soak there for a couple of minutes. Okay, and we're back. So the sample has now been in here for a couple of minutes. And now what I do is I take a pair of fine forceps and I take my sample and I want to be careful with it because basically my sample is the quality of my sample and how, how, how well I keep it until the end is going to determine the quality of the image that I can see at the end. Okay, so I want to grab it from as close to the edge as possible. So once I have it, I'm going to drop it in the toluene blue stain and it doesn't need to be in here for long at all. 
Okay, so it's going to be in the toluidine blue stain for about a minute, and once it's out of here, we're just going to give it a quick rinse back in the water, and then we are going to mount it onto the slide. Okay, and now, now that we, now that it's been in there for a minute, I've got to find it now. There it is. Okay, so once I've got my sample, okay, I am now. I'm going to put it, I'm going to just wash, leave that sample in there for a bit and let any excess stain, we're going to try and get rid of the excess stain because if it's too dark, remember the point of a stain is to increase the contrast and so you need bits that are stained and you need a background which is relatively less stained. If everything is dark, uh, it, it, it does not help you to distinguish the different structures. Okay, so that's enough waffle. That's enough killing time and what I will do now is take my very thin and now hopefully stained sample and I will place it on the slide. Now that it's on the slide I'm going to put the cover slip on top but I am going to drop uh, just a little bit of water uh, onto that, Make some clean water. So just take a drop, one, two, three, and at this point, we take the cover slip, okay, we take the cover slip, and we just put one side on and gently lay it. Okay, we've got our slide prepared, okay, and we are going to view under the microscope. So we place it onto the stage, we, we clip it into place, clip it into place, and we begin the viewing. All right, guys, so we have now placed the slide in the microscope, and we're going to begin with four times viewing, and... Um, brace yourselves okay so here we're looking at the best image that I can generate um, so with four times you can see I'm going to try and hold it as steady as I can but you can see the tissue of the stem and you can see in the middle uh, just with the graticule divisions on top of it uh, you can see one of the vascular bundles okay so we're going to use that for a low power drawing and now we'll switch over to times 10 and now at times 10 not only can we see the organization of the tissues we can also see more detail of individual cells okay so at times 10 or times 40 that's when you really need to be drawing individual cells and not just um, tissues okay so uh, let me go in again so this times 10 or times 40 is what we might use to draw our, our high power biological drawing out and and that would include individual cells okay uh, let me remind you that at four times okay I know I, I know that we can see individual cells but we can see so many that it doesn't make sense to draw individual cells. And in a low power biological drawing, a low power plan, you must not draw individual cells, just collections of cells doing the same function, i.e. tissues. So re what that means for us is you're gonna draw groups of cells which are the same color, okay? Or seem to be part of the same tissue. And that you must draw together and we'll just I'll give you an example of what that means. You can also see the graticule. And before we do anything else, we also have to calibrate that graticule because we need to know what those divisions mean, okay? So right now, as you can see, I've got the times four objective. 
and we can see that roughly the vascular bundle diameter goes from about 2, 2.5, to about 7. So I can say that, okay, there's about, um, and each, each number has about 10 divisions. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, about 45 divisions is the diameter of that vascular bundle. But I don't know what that means in terms of actual distance. So we need to do a calibration so that we know what those divisions mean and that we can then estimate how big that vascular bundle is in real distance. Okay, so this is our stage micrometer, okay? Um, we hear a lot about graticules and graticule divisions, but graticules are meaningless without calibrating that, okay? So this is my stage micrometer. Okay, I'm trying to zoom in so you can see what it is. Okay, if you look very, very closely, you can see that in the middle of that circle, there's a line. Now that line has got um, divisions. That line is actually many, many divisions, and each of those divisions is 0 0.01 millimeter. So what we're gonna do now is put this stage micrometer under the microscope or on the stage, and then we are going to calibrate that with the graticule divisions up here. Okay, so remember, we were looking at our vascular bundle, we know how many graticule divisions it is, but we don't know what the size of each graticule division is at that, micros at that of, uh, magnification. So we need to do a calibration so that we can, s we can relate graticule divisions to actual distance and then make an est estimation of the size of that vascular bundle. Okay, so um, I've put my stem slide to the side and now we're going to put this stage micrometer into the microscope or on the stage. Just going to make sure that that circle that you saw is right in the middle. That circle that you saw is right in the middle of the stage where the light is coming through. Okay, and okay, so I've spent some time lining up the two scales, and now if we look in the microscope, hopefully you'll see that I've got the two scales lined up as best I can. And what I can see is that the 100 uh, divisions on the stage micrometer is equivalent to 40 divisions on the eyepiece graticule and this is when I've got the times 4 objective on. Okay, so what I would write down is just that equivalency. 40 divisions on the eyepiece graticule is equivalent to 100 divisions on the stage micrometer. Remembering that each each division on the stage micrometer is equal to 0 0.01 millimeters. Okay, now what we do is then repeat that because we're going to do some drawings at times 4, but we're also going to do a drawing at times 10. So I, I put the times 10 objective in. Okay, now this time, as you can see, um, the eyepiece graticule divisions line up exactly pretty much with the stage micrometer. That makes life much easier. That means that each one division on the eyepiece graticule is the same as one division on the stage micrometer, which, if you remember, what that means is, is that each one division on the eyepiece graticule is equivalent to 0 0.01 millimeters, okay? Because each one division on the eyepiece uh, each one division on the stage micrometer is the same as each one division on the eyepiece graticule. So that's going to make things much easier for when it comes to estimating the size of your sample, um, calculating um, the magnification. So once you've done that calibration, then you take your um, slide, and at that time, that's when you start doing your drawings, and that's when you can put a magnification to the thing that you are drawing, 
first because we, we will start with our low power plan and we'll look down the microscope and I think we'll just move around until we find that vascular bundle because we want to draw that vascular bundle at a high low magnification first and then move on to a high magnification. Okay, so there's one right there. Okay, uh, and what so what we would do is we would do that drawing. Remember, no cells. Okay, we'll draw the tissues that we can see, all the tissues grouped together. And now, when we look at the eyepiece graticule and we can see that roughly from one end of the vascular bundle to the other end, it goes from about 6 to about 2.5. That's about 35 eyepiece graticule divisions. We can use our conversion scale to give that vascular bundle an actual size and make sure that we represent that on our drawing. Okay, now let's switch over to times 10. Now, when we do the times 10, again, you know, we're going to have to, now that's difficult to see here, but you'll see it fine with your actual eyes. But again, we're going to have to, we'll do the drawing, we'll draw some actual cells this time. Okay, and again, we'll use the eyepiece graticule divisions, which in this time we know mean, you know, if for every one graticule division, that's 0 0.01 millimeters. Okay, and your high power drawing, remember, that's going to have individual cells. Yeah, okay. Remember, though, when you do your high power drawing, you don't have to draw every single cell in the vascular bundle. Okay. A few examples of each type of cell is more than adequate.